Hi, this is BK Hobby, and today I'm going to show you how I added a new security camera to my system. In this video, I'll only focus on the physical installation of the camera, since I already have a video surveillance system fully set up. The camera I'm adding is a 3 megapixel power over ethernet camera from QCam, which also included an 8 channel network video recorder, NVR. I'll post links to all equipment and tools in the video description. The NVR has a 2TB hard drive and a built-in 8-port power over ethernet switch. There is a basic phone app available for live viewing your cameras, and it does use some random servers in China for remote viewing, but since I'm using a Pi-hole ad blocker in my network, the NVR is blocked from connecting to those IPs. This means I can only view my cameras when connected to my local network via VPN, but that's a trade-off I'm willing to make for better privacy. I've been using the system for a while and I'm very happy with it, but I wanted to add a new camera to cover a missing portion of my rear yard. As I mentioned, the camera is powered over Ethernet and is a 3 megapixel camera, which provides decent video quality. You can get higher resolution cameras, but I wouldn't go lower than 3 megapixel myself. Inside the box you will find the camera itself, mounting hardware, a helpful sticker for drilling the mounting holes and a really crappy 60 foot ethernet cable. The cable is flimsy and the connectors feel like they're about to fall off so I'll be using my plenum rated CAT6 cable instead since I'll have to build my own connectors at each end anyway. The camera itself is very nice with a metal enclosure and feels very sturdy. I've had a few of these installed outside for almost two years now and they show no signs of wear from the elements and all are working reliably. I love their picture quality, the 3 megapixel image is definitely sharp and fluid and there are several options and filters you can select in the software to fine tune the image. So let's get started installing the camera. I'm using the provided sticker to position the mounting holes for the camera. I'm installing it on the corner of my house on top of the vinyl siding. The camera base has a notch on the side to allow cables to go through it. I'm positioning the notch to the side closest to my vinyl siding corner where I will hide the cables later on. This makes it a very clean install and you can't really see any cables unless you're looking for them. I'm pre-drilling the three mounting holes with a small bit so the mounting screws catch easier. Now I have to drill a hole in my wall to get the cable into the basement. And this is where I made a mistake. With every other camera I installed, I was able to pull back the siding and drill a hole from the outside to allow my cable to go into the basement and hide it underneath the siding. In this case, since I was so close to the gas outlet, I couldn't pull the siding back enough and I decided to drill from the inside. Well, once I got through the wall, the drill bit kept going and I ended up punching a hole in my siding. It wasn't such a big deal in the end and I ran my cable through the wall and over top of the siding. Now that I had the end of my CAT6 cable outside, I needed to crimp an RJ45 connector onto it to connect it to the camera. I use these crimpers and I really like them. I also use these CAT6 RJ45 connectors with sleds that hold my wires in place while I stick them inside the connector. For the cable, you can pretty much use any pinout as long as it's the same on each end. You're just patching the connection through from one end to the other. But it's always good to use a standard, so I use the T568A pinout, which is green-white, then green, orange-white, then blue, blue-white, orange, brown-white, and brown. And remember rule number two from Zombieland, always double tap. Now that I have my camera side connector made up, I can plug it into the camera and secure the wiring on the outside. I'm using plenty of electrical tape to seal the connection and hiding the cables under the vinyl siding corner piece. I push the remaining cable slack back inside the house. Now back inside, I need to run the cable to my home automation rack and the NVR. I'm using cable staples to secure the cable in place until I get to a cable bundle, at which point I switch to zip ties. Now I need to get the cable inside the rack. I measured how much extra cable I need to get to the NVR once inside the rack and cut the cable off my CAT6 spool. 
Once I have the cable cut off, I can route it into my rack along the path of all the other cables entering it. I'm still using zip ties to secure the cable in place. And I left myself a couple extra feet of cable as a service loop, just in case I decide to move the NVR down in the rack at some point. Now I need to make the RJ45 connector for the NVR side of the cable. I'm using the same pinout here, T568A, as on the other side. Again, always double tap to make sure you get that crimp in. Now that the cable is fully made up, I can plug it into the NVR and hope for the best. The link light on the power over ethernet switch came on, so that's a good sign. There it is. The camera came online. Only thing left to do is to adjust it. To adjust the camera, I basically loosened all the bolts so I could have free movement of the camera on its base and used my phone app to find the perfect position for it. Now I just tighten each bolt slowly while still holding the camera until all bolts are tightened down. So that's it. The camera is installed and it was automatically added to my NVR as a new channel. In a future project video, I'll work on incorporating the video feed from the camera to my OpenHab automation system. So please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon if you would like to get notified when my future videos are published. You can also look at some of my older videos on the channel. Until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.